Bo Dallas born Taylor Rotunda is a name that resonates with any WWE fan of the last 10 years. From his early days in FCW and notable feuds in NXT, all the way to his majorly disappointing main roster run, Bo Dallas definitely has a career worth looking back at. What's up guys, it's Kaze here. If you enjoy the video, please give a like and consider subscribing. And without further ado, let's get into it. Bo Dallas signed a developmental contract with WWE in 2008. Starting his run in FCW under various names like Tank Rotunda and Bo Rotundo, he quickly made a mark teaming with his brother Bray Wyatt but at the time going at the name Duke. The Rotundo brothers were able to capture the FCW Florida Tag Team Championships. They had notable matches with teams like the Dude Busters and Kurt Hawkins and Heath Slater. Their most significant feud was actually with the now legendary Usos. With FCW rebranded as NXT, Bo Dallas emerged as a resilient, in-your-face, over-positive baby face. He competed in the Gold Rush Tournament and had somewhat memorable matches with Jinder Mahal and The Big Show. One of his early career highlights was winning the NXT Tournament and participating in the 2013 Royal Rumble match. He also had a win over Wade Barrett who was the Intercontinental Champion. This was when the IC title was pretty irrelevant, so yeah he beat a champion but you know. While in NXT, Bo's biggest achievement was beating Big E Langston for the NXT Championship. His title reign saw him win against opponents like Leo Kruger, who went on to be Adam Rose, and Antonio Cesaro. However, the NXT audience began to turn on him, despite his character not changing at all, which might have actually been the issue. They began to boo him. This reaction led to subtle heel traits in his character, and this all culminated in his infamous Bo Leave gimmick. And if you're not familiar with it, he was pretty much the ultimate troll, embracing the booze and being a super positive narcissist. He became the longest reigning NXT champion, holding it for 260 days, before losing it to Adrian Neville in a banger ladder match at NXT Arrival. And this is really when NXT started to hit his stride, and he became my favorite show within WWE. Before debuting on the main roster, Bo got the typical vignette treatment from WWE before anybody debuted on the main roster. A remember Veer? Bo Dallas debuted on the main roster as a delusional yet endearing heel. And he even started off with an undefeated streak, beating the likes of Kofi Kingston and Sin Cara. And instead of the amount of victories in O, it was the amount of victories in Bo. For instance, 12 in Bo, 14 in Bo. You get it. However, after going 17 in Bo, his streak was ended by the legendary future Hall of Famer, iconic R Truth. And this led to a more aggressive side of his character. However, after feuding with Mark Henry and challenging for the Intercontinental Championship against Dolph Ziggler, both completely forgettable rivalries, Bo's character began to lose momentum. This led to his involvement in a comedic stable, The Social Outcast, alongside Curtis Axel, Adam Rose, and Heath Slater. Believe it or not, it was actually supposed to be taken serious. You got four men with the same goal, been put on the shelf for far too long. We all came up here with one goal. Actions speak louder than words, right boys? Right. Yeah. But after not really connecting well and lack of proper booking, they just fell to the wayside and became comedic characters. In 2016, Bo found a new direction where he joined Curtis Axel to be a part of the Miz Taraj. I always hated that name. The Bears are assaulting Ambrose! Bears. They were pretty much two lackeys for The Miz, and they ended up turning on him after some time. Oh no! No! And soon after, Bo wasn't really featured on WWE television that often. His last match was in a six-man tag team match at a house show in 2019, and he was released from the company in 2021, being a part of WWE's infamous and heavily memed budget cut releases. Also a part of these releases was his brother Bray Wyatt, and Bray Wyatt's release alone caused a lot of outrage from many fans. Bray returned to WWE in 2022 with a very emotional promo and a new gimmick. You found them! You chased me! You are the reason! And in the following weeks, he would proceed to foreshadow more people coming to join him. One of the main people being Uncle Howdy. 
This character was Bo Dallas's return to the WWE. However, their storyline was cut short due to Bray falling ill and passing in August of 2023. Something that even saying while recording is still hard to believe. Bo's appearance in the 2024 documentary Bray Wyatt Becoming Immortal and his emotional induction speech at the WWE Hall of Fame for his father and uncle really highlighted his resilience and dedication to his family. Bo Dallas's on-screen return is one of the most anticipated in recent WWE history. A lot of fans are eager to see how this character is going to play out and what type of role will he play in this new era of WWE. The current speculation is that he'll be leading a group called the Wyatt Six, a group of unknown or forgotten wrestlers from our past that refuse to be ignored any longer. There have been major teases in the background and with QR codes on screen, very similar to Bray Wyatt's return in 2022. And for what it's worth, I think with all he's been through, Bo deserves this time in the spotlight. And I'm hoping the character gets the time and opportunity that he deserves but yeah that's pretty much it guys i'm actually losing my voice a bit so i'm not able to record for too long but i felt like i literally watched bo dallas's entire wwe run and completely forgot it so i wanted to do this video as a recap if you enjoy please leave a like and let me know anybody else you'd like me to cover next another video for you guys next sunday and until next time keep it kaze